<laughs> okay, imagine being paid to smash things up for a living. It's kind of cool, especially if it's people like Disney or NASA doing the paying. Yeah, in Christchurch, that exact business has been working away in secret, testing all sorts of objects to their limit. In secret, until Jendi Harper got herself inside. From hatchbacks to 36-ton truck and trailer units. All deliberately crashed, ultimately to ensure your safety on the road. And today, the turn of the humble Holden station wagon. We're going to go straight for that power pole, we're not going to deviate. Exactly, so the, uh, the vehicle's going to start off down here at zero and then on the, on about 80 metres down the road will be doing 80 kilometres an hour. Chris oversees 50 of these crash tests a year, one a week. There's no crash test dummy? No, not this You don't this need vehicle. me to volunteer? No, no, or me yeah. to volunteer the cameraman no. to go in there? I certainly wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> no, he's saying no. Wise man, here's how it works. A crane lifts a concrete block connected by wire to the car. When the block is dropped, the gravitational force accelerates the driverless car on its fatal course. An attached steering wire keeps it on a straight path. Usually it's a closed site, no onlookers, but today a crowd of 200 invited guests. Cameras at the ready. The testers have cameras of their own, several of them. Thumbs up, we're good to go. Three, two, one. V pole at 80 kilometres an hour, pole wins. For the CEO, another successful outcome. I often tell people we get paid to break stuff. Earlier at the Home Solutions factory in Christchurch, Chris showed us what else they are testing. Ow. Safety harnesses. Any tearing in the webbing? There's no tearing for any of those. Also, reinforced steel. We're trying to make sure it's got the right amount of strength but also ductility and ductility being how much you can stretch before it breaks. Chris reckons they're the biggest importers of Dodge vehicles and also the biggest destroyers. We import these as a, a sacrificial lamb. They're used to test road safety barriers to American standards. Chris can't divulge all his clients, but big names include NASA, Disney, Universal Studios. So why do they send product way down here to be tested? Well, Chris says we do it secretly, we do it cheaper, and we do it better. I think New Zealand's have a really unique way of problem solving. Is Kiwi ingenuity still a thing? Oh, without a doubt. It's just that the mindset of how to solve a problem. Anyone can solve a problem with they've got enough money, but doing it in a smarter way. Take this hydraulic machine capable of testing 800 tonnes of pressure. The best way to put that in perspective is it could bench press a 747 and do that fairly rapidly. Currently testing seismic dampers, it would cost $2 million to import this. These clever clogs built it themselves for a fraction of the price and the engines to power it. There's no hierarchy here. Chris says the best solutions to the trickiest problems often come from the factory floor. Kind of look guys, just be careful not to trip over anything. This exercise a chance for emergency services, road engineers and even linesmen to see a collision in real time with no fatalities. It just kind of brings home a hope to people why we've got to do some work to protect people from these poles. He's with the New Zealand Transport Authority. It's looking into the risk power poles pose as part of its Safer Systems campaign. To make sure that when a crash does occur that we're actually getting panel beaters busy rather than ambulances and hearses. That would have been the likely outcome here. Instead, the only fatality, one Holden wagon, off to join the graveyard of sacrificial vehicles. Mm, I could spend a day on the shop floor there. Yeah, cra crashing things and smashing having, things is fun. Having a look-see.